In the only neighborhood of present-day Philadelphia, Fisher Park is an urban green space that stands out as a balm to the hustle and bustle of the North Fifth Street business corridor and transportation hub. Once the traditional land of the Lenni Lenape people, they were gradually driven west by European settlers who came to control areas of the lower Delaware River region by the mid-18th century. By the late 19th century, the 23-acre public park was owned by industrialist Joseph Wharton, and in 1908, he donated the land on his deathbed to the city of Philadelphia as a Christmas gift. Over the years, the condition of the park has seen its ups and downs, a reflection of the varying levels of investment by the ever-evolving community and city at large. Today, the park, with some renewed attention, serves as a source of mental and physical health and a place that supports and stimulates social connections. The Roots Garden at Fisher Park is something of a small oasis on the edge of the park. Founded and tended to lovingly by some of Olney's residents, the garden is a microcosm of Olney's diversity. Different people with wide ranging backgrounds and heritages making the effort to coexist with as much harmony as possible. Around 1997, there was a, a group of people who had formed a, a smaller association behind us in, the, in that uh, area of uh, the neighborhood, uh, 6100 block between 5th, 8th, Godfrey, and Spencer. That takes in all those homes behind us. We got block captains together and decided that our focus would be to clean up the park. We started monthly cleanups together uh, and then formed the Fisher Park Community Alliance so that we'd be um, officially um, recognized by the Fairmont Park Commission and then asked them if we could build a community garden, which was had been talked about for years in our cleanups and things, and we knew that there, there was interest. Um, so they gave us the go ahead with a lot of planning and you know careful uh, expertise. And then they said, all right, we'll let you do it. We'll help you with it, but you have to maintain it. This is entirely your, your thing. Um, if it falls apart, we'll take it down. So no pressure there. <laughs> yeah. Smells different. So I you know, get, get a few of these, put them in water on my counter, and I'm happy. It reminds me I've been up to the garden. <laughs> a real one. <laughs> yeah. When I initially um, said that I was going to be involved in the garden, you know, the kids was very eager to come up. And, um, you know, I had them digging in the plots and um, pulling weeds and all. And um, they got so much involved in the work and it was like, hey, Pop, Pop, uh, you know, this is a lot of work here. This is like a farm, you know, so we, we're going to call this the farm. But as I got more and more involved, I had to agree with them. I was like, hey, this is a farm. I'm farming, I'm not gardening. So there, there's two type of, uh, you know, you may, you may see a community garden, but within that community garden, you have gardeners and you have farmers. And fortunately, we're farmers. I always tell people this is the best piece of real estate I ever invested in. It's like eight feet by four feet. But when you come here early in the morning, you feel like the whole world, you feel like you own the whole universe, really early in the morning. It's just a, a quiet sanctuary. You know, then you, you plant the plant. I'm, I'm different than other gardeners because they're really into the vegetables and stuff. And I get a little bit jealous. But you, you plant the plants just to make yourself be out in nature. Do you remember when we had the t-shirts? Oh yeah. It's like an urban oasis. It was just a big t-shirt that said, it had um, watercolor on it and then it said uh, an, uh, Roots Garden and Urban Oasis. And it really is, it really is um, uh, an oasis. We've gone through, we've had rough years and um, like most of the community gardens. And um, this past year with the pandemic has been really rough. A lot of gardens, as they get started, people are very enthusiastic and they're young and they're hot and they're ready to go. And then 25 years later, we're all old as dirt and we're tired. And um, we haven't done our job to get enough younger people involved. This year, we've got a bunch of new people involved. So that's exciting. When I started working in the garden, um, 
I would see those children over in the basketball courts. And they didn't know that I was a member of the garden. And when they found out that I was, uh, you know, things around the garden area had gotten uh, a lot better as far as some, you know, some vandalism and things of that nature, because they knew the fact that I was up there. And um, I also gave their parents, shared some of the harvest with, my, with their parents. So I knew, hey, if your parents not getting any fruit and vegetables, I'm gonna tell them why. So there were years when we had classes coming here. Um, we had two different teachers involved from Grover, Washington, and they would bring the, their science classes up here and the kids would work on the flower show exhibit that we did and all of that stuff. Hopefully we can once again bring kids here to understand the importance of, um, of nature and of growing your own food and knowing where food comes from. Having young people um, understand that taking care of um, living, growing things is really um, critical, not just for survival in society, but um, critical for them to develop as people. So my vision is, is um, it would encompass the kids at Lowell Elementary, it would encompass the community, it would encompass issues of arts and science. I, I love the fact that Lowell is an elementary school because it feels like little kids, they, they still have their sense of wonder. And so the idea of, you know, the, like, wow, you put this seed in the ground and something pops up and it's like, wow, you know, all of a sudden this bead is jumping out and you can actually see it. You know, I think that little kids are into that more and they give us that kind of energy. I would say that the garden is a reflection of the Alani community uh, on the surface um, through its diversity. Um, the individuals who come to garden here are um, from, you know, all racial backgrounds and walks of life. My block is a really great example of that and the garden is, uh, is too. Um, not everybody who comes to the garden speaks English as their first language, but you don't need to. And that is wonderful um, because, you know, the, the language of plants is not English. <laughs> so. I feel like our kids, the next generations, they need to see there's more to life, that life is actually here, that there's value in your community, there's value in your neighborhood. You know what, honestly, not just kids, adults, they need to see there's other stuff going on in your neighborhood that's actually positive. It's not just the shootings and all that stuff. And maybe the more we know each other through things like the garden or church or wherever, we'll feel a little safer with each other and we honestly need that right now. So when I think about the garden, I think about the fact that you have people from these different cultures doing a unified type of thing mm -hmm. and that is growing. And for the people that may not know or understand, we're the newbies, mm -hmm. you know, so <laughs> we have a heart for it, but at the same time, we haven't done it. Mm -hmm. We're doing it now, we're getting the experience. But as we get that experience, we're talking to our neighbors like Susan, we're talking to Jackie, you know, like we're talking to people that are from different cultures and we're just learning stuff, you know? So it's an opportunity through that unity to be able to build and then grow. The work of these hardworking neighbors at the Roots Garden hasn't gone completely unnoticed, but clearly there's still much to be done to share the story of the garden and to keep it vibrant in the current climate of uncertainty. What can this garden oasis farm become in the hands of the next generation? Undoubtedly, the garden is currently in good hands, but those hands are searching for new ones to help them till the soil, pull the weeds, and envision new harvests that can feed the community and build an even stronger sense of acceptance, diversity, and belonging in Albany.